Hi guys, my name is Star and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about some of my favorite authors and predicting possible favorite authors. So I did this video, I believe last year. Um, I don't know, all my old videos kind of just merged together, but I'm pretty sure I filmed this video last year and it was one of the fav my favorite videos that I filmed. It wasn't one of the favorites that people watched, but I really liked this video. Um, so I wanted to do it again. Um, basically for me, if you don't know, as a reader, I like to read like authors completed works. Um, it's something that I really enjoy. I like reading a lot of things from a single author. So I sample a lot of books and then I find a book that I really like and then I like hone in on that author and read as much as I can from them. I do not call an author my favorite author until I've read all of their completed works. So at the moment, from that last video, I only had one favorite author, but I can proudly say I have two favorites now because I finally finished somebody's back um, log of books. He has released a whole bunch of new books though, so I gotta catch up again. But I can call him my favorite author, at least until I read his new books, and if I don't like his new books, then we could change it. But for now, he's still a favorite. But yeah, I have two favorite authors and then the other um, three authors I'm going to be talking about in this video are predicted. I think based off of the number of books that I liked by them or how much I liked a book that I read by them, they will become favorites of mine. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so we're going to start with the author that I know that you guys know that is my favorite and that is Kristen Kishore. I have loved Christian Kishore since I was in middle school. She is the reason that I want to write. She is my, I love her so much. Like um, the video I filmed before this was my goals video and the video you'll see before this is my goals video. So I'll link it up here. When I talk about like writing, whenever I think about writing and publishing my book, one of the things that makes me very excited is thinking about like the people that could possibly read it. And Kristen Kishore is one of those people I think about when I think about people possibly reading my future book. And it would make me so excited if she was because she is the person that's really sparked and nurtured, not even, not necessarily sparked, but definitely nurtured my love of reading and writing and the craft as a whole. So yeah. Um, when I do these, we're going to talk about other books. I'm going to talk about my favorite book and the book I want to read the most from that author. Um, I might have multiple favorite books, so I might talk about a lot of them. I might talk about more than one, but I'm only going to, I'm going to limit myself at two books per author because if I talk about more than two, we'll be here all video, the, we'll be here all day. So Kristen Kishore has written the Graceling Realm series, which starts with Graceling which is then followed by Fire, which is my favorite book by her. I recently bought the new cover for Fire. So this is not my crazy annotated version, but my crazy annotated version is right here. As you can see, Fire is like my all, one of my all time favorite books. I absolutely love this book. It follows Fire, who is a monster in this world and just her ability to come to terms with what it is to to be a monster, to be an outcast, to be considered just otherly and not, to not be considered a part of your own people, even though you are just because you're different. And I just, I absolutely love this book. Um, Fire was my favorite book as a child. It's still my favorite book as, one of my favorite books as an adult. And as you can see, I just really love it. I highly recommend everybody read this book, honestly. She's also written Bitter Blue, which is book three. Book four is Winter Keep and my most anticipated read or the one that I want to read most from her because I'm halfway through it and I want to finish it before the new book comes out, which leads me into this little segue. The fifth book, Sea Sparrow, comes out in November, which is also one of the books that I really want to read from her. And the final book by Kristen Kishore is Jane Unlimited. This is my other current favorite book by Kristen Kishore right now. It is very hard and not hard to get. So this book I like to call, <laughs> I like to compare it to like the Japanese dating sim games where you can like, you have an overarching story, right? And then you pick like your boyfriend in the, in the like the dating sims, right? And then that boyfriend based off of 
certain things that happen like leads you down a different story and a different path so this book is that same way so jane our main protagonist in this book has different things that she can pick and she picks each one and kristen kashore takes us through a different book based off of each of the things that she has picked it's very complex it's simple but also complex i do not recommend reading the audiobook for this um, I've not heard anybody have a good experience reading the audiobook for this because it's kind of hard to visualize and under like conceptualize as an audiobook. But when you read it, it's so interesting. And I love this book more and more each time that I read it because it just shows off her ability as a writer because she basically writes in like five different genres in this one book. And I just really enjoy Jane Unlimited. So yeah. Jane Unlimited is my other favorite book by Kristen Kishore. The next author we're going to talk about is Yoro Sumino, and he has written I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which is a light novel, but they also made a manga adaptation of it. I originally read the manga adaptation, but I have also since then read the light novel adaptation, and this is also one of my all-time favorite books. I cried so much reading this. Um, I'll insert this little clip of me sobbing for you guys. Yeah, I love this book a lot. Like, I just think this book is absolutely beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's about a girl named Sakura who has pancreatic cancer and her meeting this boy and they basically fall in love. But it's a doomed love story, obviously, but also not in the way you think it's doomed. And I don't know, it just, it just really hits home on that idea of live your life to the fullest every day because you never know what's going to happen but yeah i really like i wouldn't eat your pancreas and this is what started my love for yoro sumino so i actually read this book because i read velvet Zieri. she's just even more of my bias now just based off of that simple fact that we she has great takes in books i have great takes in books and yeah now <laughs> They have also written I Had That Same Dream Again, which comes as, again, as a light novel, and they did do a manga adaptation for it. I don't really like the manga adaptation. I definitely recommend reading the, um, the light novel version, at least first. Like, if you want to read both, that's okay, um, but definitely read the light novel edition first because you, because since they, it is, like, an actual, like, written piece of literature, um, Yoro Sumino is able to explore things differently and more in-depthly and you can see the progression of the story a lot better I feel than you could see it in the manga. I haven't reread the manga since I originally read it and I read this one first but I had an easier time understanding and following the story when I read it as a light novel and I enjoyed the story a lot more um, when I read the light novel. It's technically my least favorite from them at the moment but overall I still really like it I still really recommend it I still do think that you should read the light novel first they have also written at night I become a monster and this is my second favorite book by them I really 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 love this book this book follows the effects of bullying what really causes somebody to be othered against another group of people that guy is angry at us this book focuses on bullying about ostracization of different people is fitting in really worth it or are you just a monster from fitting in who is the monster the one that fits in the one that doesn't fit in who you know this book is really interesting and I, so the main character is this guy that can basically shape shift into a monster and each chapter follows so in the daytime he is a human he's a regular like high school boy um, but at night, he becomes a monster, as the title says. And so this book follows him over a span of a week. And you get to see both sides. You get to see him during the day as a human and at night as a monster. And you come to learn almost that him as a human is more of the monster than him at night. But I won't say too much more about it without because if I say anything more, it will spoil things. And one thing I have learned definitely going into Yoro Sumino's work, it is definitely like, I like going into them almost like 
blind <laughs> in a way like not knowing too much and i have had a really good time with, with like sticking with that kind of mentality i just really love them i read this one before their new works came out so then therefore I can call Euro Sumino my second favorite author at this point because I have technically completed all their works until the new works have come out. And since I've completed them, we have three new books. The first book being I Have a Secret and I'm really looking forward to this one. I don't know too much about it. I don't think this is the one I'm going to pick up first when I get back into reading Euro, Euro Sumino, but it might be. Who knows? I might read them. I might continue deciding to read them in order because I basically have read Euro Sumino's works in order at this point, or at least in order of translation. So I might keep up with that or I might just decide to wait until um, some of my pre-orders come in because the last Euro Sumino book that was supposed to be released this year has been released. It got released last month but we're gonna go back to the first one that was released this year. So the first Euro Sumino book that was released or translated this year is, this <laughs> This title is a little bit confusing. I am blue in pain and fragile, but also same. Um, this is the one that I'm really looking forward to because I remember when I originally was getting into Euro Sumino and I was trying to figure out what all had been translated already from like Japanese into English that I could read and get my hands on. Uh, this book popped up but it obviously wasn't translated yet and I was just like I don't know for some reason I was very drawn to this book and I was like this is the book that I want to read the most from them like why can't I read it and when I found out that um, Seven Seas was translating it and publishing it this year I was very excited so I can't wait to read that one I'm very excited about reading that one and then the one that got published last month is I Will Forget This Feeling Someday which sounds like another one that's gonna break my heart and stomp on it and shatter it. Basically, if you can't see, I love Euro Sumino because they like stomp on my heart, break it, tear it apart, throw it out the window, spit on it. Like I just, they make me feel so much because their writing is so, and the way they craft their stories is just like so perfect. Like you have to read them. You have to read them at least once in your life. I feel like you can't go your entire life without reading at least one of their light novels. Just saying that. Okay, next we're gonna get into the portion that is just predictions. So there's three authors for the predictions portion. This author was in the video last year and that is Kate DiCamello. So I did make progress on Kate DiCamello from filming this video last year to now, but I, it's, I only read one book and I read the one that I was most excited about reading first. And I really, really didn't like it to the point that I almost considered not reading any more of Kate DiCamello's books. But she has so many that I'm like, if one book is like a bust compared to all the rest of them, I can get over that. Has made me apprehensive about picking up the rest. But again, we're gonna talk about all the ones I've read first. I'll talk about my favorite ones. So the books that I've read by Kate DiCamello include The Tiger Rising, because of Wind Dixie, which is one of my favorites by her, as you can see by the tabs. And I've also read The Tale of Despero by um, Kate DiCamello, which is my one of my all-time favorite books. I love this book. This is my favorite um, Kate DiCamello book. As you can tell, I typed the heck out of it. I had to read this in college. It's one of the few college classes that I actually really enjoyed. And I just love this book so much. I love the play with dark. I love the play on dark and light, what's good, what's evil. And just i don't know this book is just fantastic absolutely fantastic and i love it so much and anytime i think about this book i think about aces byungkwan so if you like byungkwan for ace maybe you should read this because for, for whatever reason this book and byungkwan like are equal in my head so just saying if you like ace for ace byungkwan you should probably read this book or if you like this book maybe you should get into ace and then the book that i read last year that i absolutely hated by kate DiCamillo was the Magician and the Elephant, or The Magician's Elephant, my bad, sorry. I don't even know the title of this book. I hated it that much. I hated this book. I almost didn't even finish it. It wasn't just not good. There was so much going on in this book to the point that like nothing happened. Like things happened, but like they didn't happen. I don't know. I feel like this book was trying to be like a Hugo, Cab Hugo Cabaret but it's not. Hugo is one of my favorite books, by the way. I absolutely love Hugo Cabaret. It's absolutely fantastic. I love that book. And when I was like originally reading about this book and like getting, learning about it, it just, I thought it was gonna be similar. 
like this magician performs a trick and this elephant goes crashing through the ceiling and injures a whole bunch of people. So the magician gets locked up. Then there's also this orphan boy that's a part of this story who's trying to find his long lost sister. And then like, I don't, there's just a whole bunch of things going on. And like, even just saying that, like, how do those things relate? They don't really, except for at the end of the story, the the boy uses the, like breaks the elephant out of jail and like uses him to go get his sister and they like ride off into, I like kid you not, that's like actually something that happens. I don't know, did not like this book. Absolutely hated it and almost considered not reading any more of Kate DiCamillo's books. But like I said, I've read three and this is book number four. I hated four. Uh, I hated one of four books that I've read. I can I can power through some more. Like I think if I hate like one maybe two more, I will be done and I will just be like, no. Nope. Kate DiCamillo had some hits, but she also had some misses for me. Now continuing on to the books I haven't read by Kate DiCamillo, we have Flora. Yeah, Flora and Ulysses. So. I know that Disney's recently done an adaptation of this book, so I'm really interested in watching that. Um, but I think this is the one that I want to read the next because I've heard the movie was pretty good and that makes me excited because the movie was good. The book has to be better, right? So I think this is probably the one that I'm gonna pick up next. I don't know much about it other than this girl becomes friends with this squirrel. <laughs> That's all I know about this book. The next book we have is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Talun. I don't know, I've seen a lot of mixed opinions about this book. I know some people don't like some of the representation in here. So I've been kind of pushing it off for that reason. I will eventually get to it, but I don't know. This is also one of the ones by her that I still have to read. And then I have to still read all three of the books in Chris, uh, almost like Kristen Kishore's, in Kate D. Gamello's trilogy that she has. The first one, one of, I only have one of them right now and that's Louisiana's Way Home, but I'm pretty sure Raymond Nightingale is the first one and Beverly, Beverly right there is the third one. I know they all follow three separate girls. I don't know if they all connect, but I don't know. It's her little trilogy. I also still need to read. So I'm almost done with Kate DiCamello. I think that's what, four or five? That's five books and I've read four. So there's nine in total. Like I'm like at the halfway mark. So I'm doing pretty good on Kate DiCamillo if I would do say so myself, but she is still technically a predicted author because I haven't read everything yet. The next predicted author was also on my video from last year, but I have made no progress with her because I'm a horrible human being. But that author is Randy Pink. I absolutely loved Girls Like Us. Um, with all the road versus Wade stuff that are go that's going on right now, more people should have read this book. Um, more people still need to read this book. Like if you have not read this book, you need to read this book, especially with the current state of our country. Like, oh my God, read this freaking book, guys. Like, what else can I say? Yeah, Girls Like Us is the only book by Randy Pink that I've read thus far. She only has three books. I really need to get on that. I know, don't at me. But I absolutely love this book. This is the book that I credit with getting me back into reading because I stopped reading for two or three, like basically two years. And I randomly went into Barnes and Nobles one day, was just scrolling around, like walking around trying to waste time. And I just saw this book on the shelf like this, just sticking out. And I was like, that's pretty, let me read it. Let me look at it. And so I picked it up, never heard anything about this author before, never heard anything about this book on you booktube anything like that before and I picked it up and I read it and I cried so much reading this book I like Mississippi is still one of my all-time favorite characters I think about Mississippi often yeah I just wow this is Mississippi here on the cover that's Mississippi we love her uh, Mississippi is my baby nobody touch her but yeah I really love this book really like it I loved it so much that I actually pre-ordered her other book, um, Angels of Greenwood, but I still haven't just sat down and read it. Read it. I think part of the reason why I haven't just sat down and read this one is because I want to read the other book that I haven't read by her yet um, first, which is Into White, um, and that's her debut novel. And for some reason, I really want to read that one first before just reading the one that I already have. I don't know, anytime I think about reading this one, I'm like, you could, or you could read Into White first, even though I don't have Into White and I have 
Angel of Greenwood in my hands already. Like it makes no sense. Like make it makes sense, my brain, but it doesn't. It doesn't. But yeah, I haven't made any progress on Randy Pink because of this dilemma that I have. Um, but she's still definitely a predicted like favorites author of mine. I just Girls Like Us is just one of my all time favorite books and will sit with me and be with me for years and years to come. And then the final author on this list that we have to talk about is actually a new author. I read their one of their books for the first time last year. It's actually their debut novel. And that is Leah Johnson. And the book I read was You Should See Me in a Crown. I have a whole blog where I read this book and I basically only read this book in this blog because it was that good to me. It was so good. This book is so great. I have only read this book once, but I loved it. I love it. I think about it all the time. It is the queer love story of my heart. I wish I had this in high school. I would have been so happy. Yeah, it's about this girl who falls in love with this other girl and they just have all these really cute moments. It's also about finding yourself. I really love the anxiety representation in here because same, I am an anxious girl. And I don't know, I just really, really love this book. And because of how much I love this book, I feel like I'm gonna love Leah Johnson's other books. I also just love Leah Johnson on Instagram. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you really should. I think she's so cool, so badass, love her so much. But she does have a second book out called Rise to the Sun. I have not read it yet. I haven't picked it up yet. There's no real reason why I haven't yet. I just, I just haven't. She, this one I'm really interested in reading because one of my favorite moments in You Should See Me in a Crown is when they go to a concert together and I really love that. And this entire book revolves around like concerts and music. She has said specifically many, many times that people keep trying to compare her new book to You Should See Me in a Crown, even though they are on two separate wavelengths. She's like, these are very different books. They're very separate characters. Like they don't sync at all. So don't go into it expecting You Should See Me in a Crown because you will be disappointed. So that might be why, cause I'm not ready. Her second book is just a lot heavier. Like Rise to the Sun just deals with darker concepts, not as light and fun. Like You Should See Me in a Crown is very much a light, fun, fluffy read, love it so much rise to the sun is not and which makes me feel like i'm gonna cry which is probably part of the reason i haven't picked it up yet even though i know i just stated that i love to sob when i read i'm a complex human like we all complex humans but i'm just like i don't know my brain is crazy she's the newest author to my predicted favorite authors list and i'm very excited about it okay that is all for this video i hope you enjoyed me talking about some of my favorite books and my favorite authors if you have any questions leave it in the comments down below i will try my best to answer them if you have any authors or books that you would like to recommend to me also leave them in the comment comments down below i always love finding new authors and new books to read but yeah, without further ado, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!